Hi, I'm going to tell you about the physics of bank turns here and of toy airplanes. It turns out the physics of bank turns <clears throat> and toy airplanes um, is very, they're very similar to each other. All right, so um, first let me show you a car going around a banked turn. And uh, it's important that we see what perspective we're looking at this from. So if we look at this, here's the car on the bank turn. And it's kind of going um, like that. It's going... We're watching it maybe come at us and eventually it's going to go around in a circle like this. And here's the center of the circle. There's the center. So the car is accelerating this way. It's not accelerating down the inclined plane. It's accelerating toward the center. Notice that um, it's traveling at the perfect speed. So look at its tires. Its tires are not being distorted one way or the other. In fact, at the perfect speed, you can go around a bank turn and you don't need the force of friction at all. Just the normal force, a part of the normal force is what provides the centripetal acceleration, that, that provides the centripetal force. What would happen if we were going around a little too fast on this bank turn? Well then the tires would distort. So this is a car that's traveling around um, a bank turn at a, at a speed that's too fast for the bank turn. Notice that the tires are distorting. That's because the car is trying to slide up and friction is keeping it from sliding up. So in this case, I'm going to tell you that friction is down the inclined plane. The frictional force is down the inclined plane. Whereas if it's going too slow, or, let's, or imagine if it just stops completely, then you see how the tires distort the other way? They actually are distorting in such a way that the frictional force is now up the inclined plane. That's how you get those tires to distort that way. It's when you have a force that's up the inclined plane pushing those tires in that way. That gives you the distortion. So if this is too slow, the tires distort a little bit the other way. All right, well, let's take a look at how the physics, the free body diagram of this looks when you're at the perfect speed. Now I'm not going to draw the car. I'm going to just draw a dot for the car. And I'm going to put it right on the inclined plane. And I'm going to put the mg, the, the weight of the car, down like that. So that's going to be mg, the mass of the car. Now there's a normal force. And the normal force is always normal to the two surfaces. So that's the normal force right there. And unlike um, other inclined plane problems, I am not going to have my axis be down the inclined plane. Since it is accelerating toward the center, I'm going to have the axis, the x-axis go toward the center. And the y-axis then, by definition, has to go up and down like that. So it's, this time it's the normal force that I need to break into x and y components. Let's, put, let's call this theta, the angle of the bank. And then um, if I break the normal force into x and y components, maybe I'll go like this, put 1 this way, fn in the y direction, and then 1 this way, and that's fn in the x direction have no place to write that, but that's Fn in the x direction. That is the centripetal force. So you see these two guys right here? They cancel. So in the y direction, we can say that Fn y is equal to mg. Now let's go see uh, what that angle is. If this is theta, then this is theta because of alternate interior angles. These are two parallel lines. Or you can leapfrog your way to that and call that theta. Then that's 90 minus theta. So we're back to theta. So this is theta again right here. This angle right there is theta. So that's going to be Fn times the, times the cosine of theta. Since it's the adjacent side to theta. So Fn cosine of theta is equal to mg. Meanwhile, in the x direction, I'm going to say in the x direction, we do have acceleration. So A in the x direction is equal to the net force in the x direction all over the mass. 
And since it's going in a circle, we're going to say a in the x direction is v squared over r. And that's equal to the net force in the x direction. Well, the net force in the x direction is just the normal force. And so that's going to be uh, actually the normal force in the, uh, the x component of it. So that's going to be fn times the sine of theta. And we'll divide that by the mass. See, a equals f net over m. A equals F net over M. Well, I'm going to solve this side for Fn, and I'm going to plug it into there. So if I do that, apparently Fn is equal to Mg over the cosine of theta. So I'm going to put that in for Fn. So V squared over R is equal to Fn, but that's Mg over the cosine of theta times the sine of theta all over m. Cancel out the m's and apparently the perfect speed to go at is v is equal to the square root of r times g and sine over cosine is tangent of theta. <clears throat> I don't want you to memorize this equation. It can change depending on the situation. I want you to see how it can just be pretty easily derived from Newton's second law. So that's the physics of a bank turn. Let's um, talk about the physics of um, a toy airplane. It's very similar. Here's a toy airplane zipping around in a circle. See it going around in this circle? That's the propeller, these are the wings, that's the, the, the tail of the, of the airplane. Okay, let's draw the forces on the airplane. We, we do have a forward thrust maybe this way, and a backward thrust due to um, air resistance. I'm not going to draw those, they cancel out. They definitely cancel out if the, car, if the airplane is going with a constant speed. So the only other forces on this are mg of the airplane and then the tension, of the, the force of tension. Oh, yeah, I'll call that T from right now. Okay, well, <clears throat> look, um, this airplane is not accelerating this way. It's accelerating toward the center. So I'm going to put my coordinate system like this. And um, if that's theta, the angle that this that the string makes with the vertical, then this is also theta because of alternating interior angles. These are parallel lines, and here's a here's a line coming through. Or you can you can leapfrog your way over there again. If that's theta, this is 90 minus theta. Then that's the complement of theta, so that has to be theta. Okay, well I'm going to break this into again a ty and a tx. Call that Tx and that Ty. This is T. Okay, so I'm going to just tell you that um, Ty, which is T cosine of theta, that's equal to mg. See these two? They got to cancel because it's not accelerating in the y direction. In the x direction, Tx, which is T sine of theta, that is the net force. So F net over M is equal to A, and A is V squared over R. So A equals F net over M. A in the X direction equals the net force over M. I have one more minute, so I'm going to have to go fast here. So apparently, um, for that T, I'm going to plug in, I'm going to plug in um, what I get for here. So that's going to be, that T is MG over the cosine of theta, just like a bank turn, and then I times sine of theta, all over m. That's equal to v squared over r. So we can cancel the m's. We can um, bring the r over, and apparently v is equal to rg times the tangent of theta again, square root it. Simple physics for something that at first looks pretty complicated. All right, thanks for listening.